Hi, I'm Mick Garris. Tonight on Take One, we're going to take a look at horror films. And we're going to talk to some of the people who have made some of the finest horror films around. Uh, our guests include John Landis, whose first film he made at the age of 21, Schlock, a monster comedy. Also made Kentucky Fried Movie, The Blues Brothers, National Lampoon's Animal House, and An American Werewolf in London. John Carpenter, who made his first feature film as a USC student, Dark Star, for $60,000. Also made Halloween, The Fog, Escape from New York, and is currently working on The Thing. David Cronenberg, whose films include Rabid, The Brood, They Came From Within, and Scanners, is currently working on a new film called Videodrome. John, why do you think horror films are so popular? I can't really answer that with a uh, generalization that will hold true. But what is true is the genre of monster films and horror films has been consistent throughout the history of the business. If you look at the decades of the 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, there's always cycles of westerns and war movies and comedies. But there have been horror films straight through. The only difference is in budgets, whether they're A pictures or B pictures. Why are they so popular? I guess because they're really entertaining, I hope. What frightens you, John Carpenter? Um, I'm no get frightened by movies. Ever? Movies don't scare me, no. Ever? Yeah. You've never been scared when by When I was movies? a little kid. All right. <laughs> what movie? What movie? The movie that scared me the most was probably It Came From Outer Space. Did you see it in it the theater in 3D? In 3D. And I was four years old. I was sitting near the front, and the meteor came out of the screen and blew up in my face. And I jumped up and ran to the back, and I said, Wow, God, what was that? And ran back down again. Do you think that had an effect on uh, your attitude in filmmaking? Nah. <laughs> nah. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the thing. What uh, was the beginning of the whole project? Um, Universal wanted to do a remake of, of The Thing, which was a film in 1950, 51, directed by Christian Nyby, co-directed by Howard Hawks, based on a short story by John Campbell called Who Goes There? And it was uh, an excellent film, one of my favorite movies. It was uh, James Arness as a giant blood-drinking carrot from outer space. <laughs> Did it scare you when you saw it? It was time? a chairlifter for me. <laughs> popcorn, popcorn flu. But um, I realized that I really couldn't remake the thing from the movie. It just wouldn't work out. So uh, we went back to the short story, which is an entirely different sort of thing. <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> it's more about a creature that can become um, you rather than kill you. And physically become Physically you. become you, imitate you perfectly, cell for cell. So that uh, these men in this Arctic camp suddenly realize that their friends are maybe not their friends. And if they don't stop it, it can become the population of the world in about two weeks, if it gets any further than this Arctic camp. And um, when it's threatened, uh, the thing goes through several incantations and does some strange things to the human body, and, and that's what the movie's about. We're going to take a look at a clip from the thing right now, and then we'll talk about that when we come back. What kind of cell structure is this? Well, you see, that's the point. I don't get your plan. I'm not sure it is any kind of cell structure. At least as we know cell structure. You see, when this thing attacked our dogs, it tried to shape its own cells to imitate theirs. We got to it before it had time to finish. Finish what? Finish imitating these dogs. You're saying that that thing in the ice was trying to become our dogs? Yeah. It seems to be able to imitate other life forms. So what's our problem? The thing's not dead yet. Great. David, is there anything you think should not be shown in films? If you want to take that as an absolutely blanket general question, no, I don't think there's anything that should not be shown in films. Specifically, your films are known for a lot of graphic violence. Um, so let's they specifically move into, into yeah. your films. Yeah, they have been. No, I think it really depends on the tone of the film. It depends on what the film is trying to do. I mean, I have been offended by violence in movies, uh, but primarily because I think that, uh, I can't think of a specific instance, but because I think, let's say, that the violence is completely gratuitous within the context of the movie. 
That is to say, every movie has its own rules, and you can really set up any game that you want. But once you do that, you really have to play that game. Otherwise, the audience feels uh, they know that something's wrong, that something's not working. Your films are probably best known, uh, <laughs> symbolized by the exploding head at the beginning of Scanners. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you feel about that? Well, it's uh, how, how do I feel that about it being one of the the, the symbol of your work? Oh, I think it's very I think it's very appropriate because uh, the uh, the idea of a of a of a, a mind that that can't be phys an energy in a mind that can't be physically contained is 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 very appropriate I think to to the way I feel sometimes for one <laughs> and um, so on on and just in terms of the 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 effectiveness of that effect and the way it worked in the context of the movie. I'd be happy to be known by that for a while anyway, until the next movie. When you talk about censorship, uh, you have to get into the ratings problem. Do you have uh, any particularly strong feelings about the ratings board? Yes. <laughs> um, the United States, very few people realize this, but the United States is the only country in the world that does not have government-imposed censorship. Um, we have a self-regulating board of the Motion Picture Association of America whose job is to reflect the current mores. For instance, I made a movie called Kentucky Fried Movie, which was five years ago. They had a scene uh, of lovemaking where the girl was on top, and it was fairly graphic, and that got an R rating. Um, now, with uh, the moral majority and equally despicable groups screaming, uh, an identical scene in uh, American Werewolf in a porno movie projected on a screen was considered enough to get me an X. It was the same, it was the same shot. And when I said, well, wait a minute, you know, it, what are you talking about? They explained it to me, and, and they're correct. They're saying our job is to reflect the mores of the time, which means President Reagan is president, which means violence, in fact, is okay, and uh, sexuality is evil and corrupt. It's sick. <laughs> <laughs> Most horror films having an R rating, it seems to take it out of the hands of kids generally. Does that? I think I wish they'd stick with R ratings because I think that young kids shouldn't see some, some stuff. What do? You, where would you draw the line? Would you have given Halloween an R rating? Sure, sure. How about the Fog? No, PG. Was it? It was originally intended as a PG. Isn't it was it? always intended as a PG, and even with the stuff, uh, additional stuff that we shot to make it a little stronger, I still think it's a PG film. It's a kids film. What did it get? R. It got an R. Because at that time, violence was unpopular. I mean, it See, I had an experience like John's. I was a producer of a film called Halloween Two, and we submitted it to the rating board. And it's the same thing. The sexual part of Halloween Two was hit on, and it said, "This is an X unless you change this." Really. The violence was no problem. 